Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Unearth Horticulture. Today the topic is pinching and pruning. And um, really those two words are the same, they mean the same thing pretty much. It's just a matter of what your horticulture specialization is, is in, what your focus is. If you're more on the production side, the greenhouse production side, we use the term pinching a lot more. Whereas if you're in landscape uh, design and maintenance, you're talking more pruning. That's a little bit more mainstream than the term pinching. But they both basically refer to the action of trimming off the shoot tips on a plant in order to encourage some sort of branching. You manipulate the branching of your plant. So you're manipulating the shape of your plant and also you are manipulating the size of the plant. You can keep a plant more compact. So pinching and pruning are all about shape and size manipulation of a plant. We're going to talk a little bit more about the plant physiology behind pinching and pruning, some of the terms there and how it works, how that branching is initiated. And um, it's, it's a really interesting topic. So don't get scared away by the huge terms. I'm going to explain everything. I'm going to break it down. And we're going to talk about the application for you as a home grower. There are three main terms you need to understand to really get the gist of why pruning or pinching can actually trigger branching on a plant. The first term is hormone. Plant hormones, AKA growth regulators, are basically signaling agents in a plant that interact with each other. They can team up with each other and other molecules in a plant to trigger reactions and growth and development in a plant. It's just like people. Hormones are very sensitive. They can be triggered by the environment around them. They can be triggered by what, what nutrients we give a plant. They can be triggered by um, different actions we take mechanically with the plant. So hormones, they're signaling agents. The second term to understand is meristematic tissue, more particularly the apical meristem. That sounds a little bit more crazy to understand, but believe me, it's more simple than you might think. A meristem is basically where growth can occur on a plant. It's a localized area. And a fine example of meristematic tissue is a bud. So it is a concentrated area where lots of growth hormones are in a plant. And that's where growth can occur from. So a bud can sprout out leaves, flowers, stems, so a bud is a fine example of meristematic tissue, but more specifically, the apical meristem is the point on the plant, the meristem, the growth point at the tip of a shoot. That is what the apical meristem is. I hope I didn't botch that explanation. The third term to understand is apical dominance. So there's that term apical again, which means the top or the tip of the shoot. And it has to do with the apical meristem, and it's a phenomenon by which the hormones that are in this control tower, the, the main meristem of the plant, those hormones signal lower meristematic tissue, lower buds, and suppress them from branching. So this is uh, ficus elastica, and it's a great example of apical dominance. You can see it is a shoot, it's shooting straight up, and there is not any branching happening lower on the stem. That is because this tip, this apical meristem, is sending hormones lower into the plant to suppress branching. So um, there's, it's still a little bit of an unknown science. Scientists are still deeply researching all kinds of hormone interactions within plants, especially branching, because as growers in this industry, if we have a better understanding of how branching is triggered and works, it can help us a lot in creating plants that and growing plants that are um, more aesthetically pleasing to, to the eye. So those three terms, they're really important and let's combine them. So what does it mean when you have hormones concentrated in a terminal meristem, the terminal growing point of the plant that are suppressing lower buds from branching, lowering the plant. If we want branching to occur, how do we achieve that goal? It's simple. I'm going to pick this up again. You simply remove the apical meristem. 
It's literally called decapitation, horticulturally speaking, plant physiology term there for you is decapitation. You remove that apical meristem and in theory, it should trigger lower branching from those lower buds on the stem. However, that's not always the case. But first, we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about a couple of examples where this pruning, this pinching tactic, works to trigger branching lower on the plant. I cannot stress this enough. Genetics are king. Sometimes you don't have to do any kind of mechanical or chemical intervention in order to achieve branching on a plant. You simply just have to let it grow because genetics sometimes play their part. An example of a plant that I have that has weak apical dominance, other, in other words, it branches naturally. It doesn't just shoot up until you prune it or add hormones. It actually just branches naturally on its own, of its own free will, its own volition. And um, this is a Chrysula species and the common name is usually ogre ears because it's got this really wacky growth. But as you can see, it's naturally branched. It's kind of bushy. It looks really nice and I didn't have to do a single thing to it. So plants that naturally branch are really, really nice. Let's talk about a couple plants that I mechanically pruned. I took my snips. I used rubbing alcohol to sterilize them so they didn't transfer disease. And then I pruned them. I pruned that apical meristem off. I decapitated them and it caused branching lower on the stems. Let's look at this one first because it's way cool. This is a calancho or paddle plant. I like to call this variation the cinnamon plant because it's got that brown kind of copper color to it, the cinnamon color to it. Um, as you can see, I took a pinch. I decapitated this succulent and it forced all this crazy branching lower down. So that is a perfect example of how uh, removing that apical meristem can force lower growth from lower buds on, on the plant. So pretty cool. Staying in the succulent world, let's look at this burrow's tail here. Sometimes trailing plants work really, really well to pinch and prune to force branching. Um, they get nice and bushy on top, and you can even take those tip cuttings and reroot them in the center of the pot to get even more fullness in your planter. So this is another succulent example. Succulents, I find, do really well with branching if you remove their apical meristem. Now, this plant is not um, technically a house plant. I've been growing it indoors because I love bringing outside in. Um, and I actually have a Hoya cutting stuck in there because sometimes if I just have a pot of potting mix around, I just stick cuttings into it and divide them up later just to get them rooted. But um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a type of Plectranthus. I was given this plant, this as a cutting on the plant bus um, last summer, and it smells so good. It's got a really nice citrusy scent to it. It's got very fuzzy leaves. But anyways, this I recently pinched, I'd say about three weeks ago. I, I pinched off the top and I stuck that tip cutting down into the soil. So you can do that when you pinch plants. It's really handy. You can root the tips really easily. You just remove some of the lower leaves on that tip cutting and stick that so that the, that's those nodes, those buds are connected with moisture in the potting mix and they'll root sh straight away. It's, it's really fun. But um, I have some branching occurring on that stem and you could probably see it. I'm going to give you a better up close video. But um, yeah, look at all that branching happening. This is a fine example of how a pinch can naturally, a natural removal of a hormone source can cause all of this branching to occur. It's really, really cool. So there are a couple of your examples of plants that branch really well if you remove that apical meristem. But there are always exceptions to the rule. And I have found that a lot of these exceptions occur in the houseplant realm. So let's take a closer look at some exceptions. Sometimes we go to all the effort of pruning, pinching, and we think we're gonna get a nice branching response, but the plant's genetics and its apical dominance are like, not today, 
I will grow ever upward and I am not going to branch laterally for you. And that's just kind of how it is. And like I said, hormonal science is still something that scientists are researching a lot and branching in spe in, uh, specifically. But largely there are a lot of house plants that we have that refuse to branch out basally, no matter how many times you, you cut, you decapitate them, you cut off that top apical meristem. The first example I have here is Peperomia obtusifolia. This is a favorite of mine. It's baby rubber plant uh, because it's very easy to take care of. It's got really cool variations. This is marble. But what I found about this plant is no matter how many times I take a, a cut at the top to remove the apical meristem, it will always form a new terminal shoot and still grow upward. It won't branch lower on any of the lower buds, the lower nodes the lower meristematic tissue, it will just create a new terminal growing point and grow up. So eventually as this plant ages, it will form some natural branches, but it takes a long time. The next one we're going to talk about is the ficus elastica, what I was holding here in this video to demonstrate apical dominance, because this plant is strongly apical dominant. It refuses to branch lower down if you remove that meristem, it will just continue to create a new terminal growing point and grow up and up and up. It does not branch naturally until it is, it is quite mature. And that also goes for its cousin, Ficus lorata or the fiddle leaf fig. So a uh, very uncooperative plant where pinching is concerned. The last plant I'm going to talk about is kind of its own group of plants, and that is the climbing aeroids. So that would be your philodendrons and your, um, your raphidophoras, and your monsteras that are, are climbing vines. Um, these plants have a strong inclination to grow up to get light naturally in their environment. So they don't, they're not really bushy plants. They don't grow out laterally. They don't like to branch at all. So usually if you cut off a tip point on these, they will also just form a new terminal. And look how tall this guy is. So what are our key takeaways from this very scientific plant physiology topic? One, trial and error. As a horticulturist, it is so key that you understand that trial and error is a part of what you do. It's a part of the, the skill and the challenge of growing plants. So I know it feels good to be successful, but if we were successful every time, it would get boring. And failure is a part of that journey that makes the success so sweet when you reach it. So just keep in mind that if your plants, after you've pinched them, pruned them, don't do exactly what you think, Take that as a learning experience, an observation, and allow that to help you on your journey to becoming a more skilled grower. The second takeaway is when you're shopping for plants, keep in mind what you've learned. If you find a four inch pot that has one cutting in it of a philodendron or a ficus or a peperomia, anything that you've trialed and you know doesn't branch after a pinch, so you know as a grower you're going to have a hard time getting it to fill out, don't buy the plants with single cuttings in the pots. Look for pots that have multiple cuttings stuck in them so that you can have a naturally full plant right off the bat going to help you so much in your shopping journey. Third, this topic applies to all of horticulture. So no matter if you're looking at growing tomatoes or your herb garden or uh, your annuals, your geraniums, or if you're growing house plants in, inside or your succulent gardens, this topic is plants in general. It's all horticulture. So no matter what your interest is, you can take something away from this video. Okay? So that's all I have for you in this episode of Unearth Horticulture. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will work to answer those as quickly as I can and as effectively as I can. And in the meantime, hit like, subscribe to my channel so you can get more videos by me. And until next time, you've been watching Unearth Horticulture.